Getting started with HTML5 charts in Jasper Reports and Jasper Soft Studio. Part 2. In the previous video, we've discussed how to create a very basic report with a chart. We've learned how to add the chart component to the report and how to configure a basic pie chart. In this video, we will be trying another type of chart, the bar chart. We will discuss the advanced configuration view for the data configuration tab and we'll do some basic formatting. So let's get started. First thing that we will do is let's create a new report. This is the same procedure as we uh, used in the previous video. So let's go to File, New, Jasper Report, select the blank A4 template, save the report to My Reports, set the name to barchart.jurxml, press Next, uh, select the sample DB data adapter once again, and once again we'll use the query select star from orders table, press Next, grab all the fields, and we're finished with this. Now we have a blank report with all these bands that we won't need, so we can delete them. And we just need the summary band, which will expand. Now let's add the HTML5 chart component to the report pane. We're presented the HTML5 chart at a dialog again, and the bar type is already pre-selected, so let's switch to Data Configuration tab. This time the simple data configuration will look slightly different than it did the last time when we made the pie chart. Regardless, we're not going to use the simple view, we will use the advanced view instead. Let's switch to it by pressing this button. Now you see a standard configuration view that will be the same for every other chart type. Here we can see three uh, configuration levels, categories, series, and measures. Chart dataset is very similar to a crosstab dataset, and you can think of these in the crosstab terms. So category levels are row groups, series levels are column groups, and measures are, well, measures. Some charts like pi cannot have multiple series levels. Some require you to have at least one category and one series, and some require you to have multiple measures like a scatter plot chart. So let's get started with this bar chart and configure our categories. Let's double click on this category level and see how we can configure this. Here we see the name of the category level. It's by default level 1. We can change it to something that we want. Let's say country. Uh, this is just the name, the label. It doesn't affect uh, anything yet. And we see two tabs here bucket information and bucket properties. Bucket information contains the basic configuration settings for the category, such as category expression, label expression, Java class name for the uh, values returned by the expression, the sorting order, and the custom comparator expression if we have one defined. If we have a comparator class or we're using some custom class here in the valid class name. Bucket properties allow you to specify uh, additional API uh, properties or um, values uh, for just this category or series, and they can be later used in the advanced formatting, but we won't touch this bucket properties um, tab just yet. We'll just focus on the bucket information. Now let's define our category expression by opening the Category Expression Editor. We can define pretty much any, uh, any expression here in the Expression Editor. It can be a field value, it can be a modified field value, it can be a constant. In the end, all that is required is that the expression returns the value that is compatible with the value class name here. Let's uh, remove this uh, change me string and instead uh, use ship country for our expression. We will not define a label expression and we will use the same value class name as suggested here. Java Lang comparable is a very basic Java interface that is uh, implemented by pretty much all core Java classes 
and is uh, provides methods to compare one class value with another. We don't need to change the order, so we can uh, continue. Let's press OK. Now that we have our categories defined, or a category, country, we can define our series. Series, you can think of them as a column group in the cross tab. For each um, unique category, we will print all the series that we have defined. So it's more like a deeper categorization. So let's add a new series here. And you can notice that the series uh, level configuration uh, dialog is the same as for the categories. So let's uh, go ahead and create a series. Let's name it ship via. And uh, Define an expression. We will use the value of the field ship via as the expression for this series. In this data set, the ship via field uh, returns us a number, a code of the shipping company that does the shipping. Our idea behind this chart is to see how many orders are being sent to each country through each uh, shipping uh, company. So we have the ship V expression here. Let's click OK. And let's proceed to the measures. The measures are what we will be exactly measuring, as the name suggests, what we will be plotting, and how we are going to aggregate and calculate the data. So uh, let's uh, see how we can configure that. We have already one defined by default, as uh, every chart needs to have a measure, at least one. And let's edit this existing measure. As you can see, the measure editing dialog is different from series and categories. And uh, it also has two tabs that we can explore and also allows us to pick a name. So the name can be anything. We can name it Freight. It's just a label here. Then we can select whether the measure is hidden or not. Uh, we, will be, we will not be using hidden measures for a while. They are useful when you will be needing the measure values for calculations somewhere else, like in the advanced properties, but you don't need those measures to be printed on the final chart. So we will keep this not hidden for now. So now we have value definition, and here is where we configure our actual measure. We have the label expression, which defaults to this measure label, so we can edit it and say freight. So it will display as the word freight. Now calculation and value expression are tied. Uh, the calculation uh, is a function that will be applied to the value expression. So here we want to count how many order IDs do we have in our um, in our records through, we can do that by clicking here in the expression editor and just double clicking on order ID so it uh, pastes into the um, expression field. Let's click finish. Uh, and now we have to pick a value class name. The value class name needs to be uh, needs to be compatible with our calculation function and our value expression. For the calculation function, count always returns you an integer, a whole number. So this default uh, class name uh, javalang number is good for us. But if we would have something like a sum uh, of um, values with a decimal, then we would need to select a uh, different, like Java long double, so that the calculation can proceed. OK, we have defined this now, and let's click OK. Now we can preview our chart. In our previous video, we compiled the whole report to see the, how the chart looks like. But here, this dialog allows us to see how the chart looks like without even exiting it. So we can move it here, and then just press it, this button. It will open this um, panel here, which uh, displays you the uh, chart as you've configured it here. So here's our chart. Here's every country. 
here's every ship via uh, via one, via two, via three, and then the number of orders that have been shipped through these uh, shipping companies. Now that we created this chart, this bar chart, we can proceed to formatting it. We can just hide this chart preview, spend this dialog again, and let's go to the chart formatting tab, the third tab. Just like data configuration, chart formatting has a basic and advanced view. This is what we see is basic view. We can hit here, uh, hit this button, and we will switch to the Advanced view. We will not touch advanced view for now. This is a topic. For, uh, this is a pretty big topic for another video where we will go into more details. So we will go back to the simple view. Basic simple view allows you to specify the most common properties in quite intuitive fashion by going through these menus on the left. In the middle, you see the actual properties uh, that are um, under these groups and their values. So we can go through all these and see what they... Um, so what these uh, customization properties mean. We can... Some of them are pretty self-explanatory. Some of them are uh, related to uh, Jasper server and we will not be using them, such as ad hoc overrides, for example. So let's do some pretty simple formatting here. Let's maybe try to ch add a title to our chart. And maybe change some colors here. Let's maybe make our first, um, first bar red, second bar green, and the third bar to be blue, for example. Now that we've specified these, we can hit the show chart preview again and to see how our how our customization apply. As you can see, we see this our second chart title appear here, and the color of the bars changed according to our configuration here. Most of these properties, if not all, are uh, actual expressions, so you can uh, either use a, a hard-coded value or you can use an expression here. The value of using an expression is, for example, you can have um, parameters for the report that come from uh, user input, and for example, they can select not to show legend and then the legend uh, show value can be here determined by an expression. If user clicked a button to show them, the value will be true. If not, the value will be false. And then depending on that, the chart will be formatted accordingly. So these simple uh, formatting properties are all available under the chart formatting uh, basic view. They are pretty useful if you need to really quickly uh, create a chart that has some pretty simple requirements as to look and feel. But if you will uh, be needing some extra oomph for your chart, you will need to use advanced properties as they unlock the full potential of the chart design in Jaspersoft Studio. But we will talk about them in our future videos. Thanks for watching. In this video, we've learned how to create a bar chart. We've learned the difference between basic and advanced view in the data configuration tab. We learned how to use the advanced view to configure your chart and what are categories, series, and measures. We also learned the basics of chart formatting in the formatting tab. In our next video, we will learn how to use advanced properties for chart formatting and learn how to create even more chart types.